Hello, everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on finite and non-finite clauses. This week, we're going to be talking about a finite and non-finite clause, and we're going to talk about the four different types of non-finite clauses. So we're going to begin first with a few words, and I want you to tell me whether or not on its own it's a sentence. So let's look at the first one, to buy food. Now, most likely you've said to buy food is not a sentence on its own, but it does have a verb. And because of this, we're going to call it a non-finite clause when it's in a larger sentence. But if we compare it to our next three words, I bought food, we could say I bought food is a sentence. And if it were in a larger sentence, we would say that that's a finite clause. So let's compare right now the difference between finite and non-finite clauses to understand it better. Finite clauses have conjugated verbs. And what that means is that you can get sentences like, I bought food, I buy food, he buys food. Now, all of these three examples right here are sentences because they stand on their own. But if we put them in larger sentences, for instance, I forgot that I bought food, then we would say that we have a subject, I, a predicator, forgot, and that I bought food, which is a direct object because it's I forgot that, which is a noun phrase, a verb phrase, and a finite clause. But if we look at to buy food, for instance, I forgot to buy food, we still have the same structure. We have a, su a subject, a predicator, and a direct object. But now we have a noun phrase, a verb phrase, and a non-finite clause. And when we talk about non-finite clauses, we have four different types. The first type of non-finite clause is I will go buy some food. So here we have buy some food, and this is what we would call a non-finite bare infinitive because it doesn't use the word to, and the verb buy is in its bare form. We then have I will go to buy some food, and this is, of course, a non-finite to infinitive. Then we have she's the person buying food in the video. And this we would call a non-finite present participle because it's using the ing form. And the last one that we have is those apples bought. Those are the apples bought by my friends. And this is a non-finite past participle because now the verb buy is in the past participle form. So right now we're going to test your knowledge. And I want you to tell me whether it's finite or non-finite. And then if it's non-finite, tell me if it's a bear, two, present participle, or past participle. Let's look at the first sentence. Once you've seen the sentence, before you get the answer, make sure to hit the pause button so that you can check to see whether it's correct or incorrect. She came late because she had a meeting. This is a finite clause. Once again, we know that it's a finite clause because it has a conjugated verb, had. Let's look at our next sentence. Arriving late from the meeting, she was overly apologetic. This is a non-finite present participle clause, and we can see that because the word arriving is using the present participle form. Our next sentence is, he bought the toaster that was the most expensive. That was the most expensive is a finite clause because the word was is in there and that means that it's been conjugated. Our next sentence is, I don't enjoy going to parties. This is a non-finite present participle clause because it's using the present participle form. Our next sentence is, Everyone knew that he was intrigued by the offer. He was intrigued by the offer is a finite clause. Our next one is, intrigued by the offer, he took the job. Here we see that intrigued by the offer is a non-finite past participle clause. He forgot to call her. To call her is a non-finite to-infinitive clause. If she had studied more, she definitely would have passed. She had studied is a conjugated, which means that it's 
a finite clause. Now, if you have more questions on this, you can watch the video on sentence types, and you can also go back and review some of the examples that we have.